Hello and welcome to another episode of Heal Thyself, Benefistic Living. I'm your host, Mia Signs. In this episode with me is Amy Huell. Now, Amy is an, an amazing health coach and an intuitive, uh, teaches us how to eat intuitively. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, I'm very excited because I've met Amy recently, a couple months back for this series, and I'm very pleased and happy to bring her to you. So we're redoing it again because the other one was a little glitchy. And so let's all welcome Amy. Welcome, Amy. Thanks, Mia. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm happy to have you. Will you share with us your story so that people can hear how you fell in love with it's amazing because as you know, I'm like getting so excited about nutrition meeting you guys. And so how, how you got stimulated into falling in love with nutrition? Wow. Well, actually it's been through the journey of life, you know, this path that we've been on all of us. And I grew up in a home that actually had a very um, healthy um, eating environment and wellness environment. And um, then as I journeyed on from there, <laughs> Um, and also, it was the 70s, so we didn't have as much junk food, and we didn't have fast food in my town that I grew up in. And so really, I was eating really well, and feeling well, and feeling happy, and everything's great. Mm -hmm. So then as we, you know, move forward on to college, of course, you now you start eating the college you know, junk food thing. And it was the first time that I had started, I noticed that I started to wait. I didn't feel right. I couldn't think really. Um, and it was... It was all of a sudden things were very different. And then through traveling a lot, um, I went backpacking for four months as a 19-year-old in Europe. A lot of um, bread and cheese on the cheap. And uh, my my body freaked out um, because I couldn't handle um, that sort of heaviness and also that sort of clock. So my body just sort of freaked out. It was bread and cheese, and it logged in. It was really not functioning well, and uh, elimination was just not happening. You know, not to get into uh, poop, but poop is really an important thing. We need to our bodies constantly cleaning up in order to be healthy, also to absorb nutrients that we need from what else we're eating. So it was really um, a, an eye-opening experience, and one that I never wanted to repeat, <laughs> and haven't. Um, but then it was like, you know, well, I moved to Los Angeles in my 20s, and I was living, um, you know, Know, working, always eating out, uh, eating out, eating out, eating out. I uh, lived with a roommate. We didn't even have a refrigerator. We ordered in or we ate out. And then once again, there's no control over what's going in, what's in the food. Mm -hmm. And so I really started learning through experimentation that what I ingest creates the life I live, creates the thoughts that I have, creates the energy that I have, creates the health that I have. And so it was really through personal experimentation. And then also, I'm a very curious sort. So it was always, you know, looking at what other people were eating and noticing patterns. You know, are they happy? Are, are they tend to have a lot of drama in their life? Do they have... Um, illnesses, you know, and so I really started kind of pocket filing because it was just a, a passion. I was in business management, which had nothing to do with health, but I was also managing one-on-one -on -one clients um, who were in the entertainment industry, and I noticed from, you know, their theatrics and the way they wanted attention, and, and then what they ate, and, and their attitude, and the need for love. Oh, do you like that? You know, I mean, just a whole lot from people. I noticed the differences in the patterns of what they, and then how they reacted and felt. And so it was a real curiosity. And then when I went back to school in the 80s um, to finish my um, undergraduate degree, I when I was studying hard, I was in an art history uh, program at UCLA, and when I was studying really hard, because it was a lot of information in German, and all languages, everything you needed to learn, is that my brain was working so well, I was eating so well, I was not carousing in any way, shape, or form, I'm not going out for happy hour with the girls and all the stuff that, all of a sudden, my intuition was strong. Um, I, I, I had telepathy. There were things that I couldn't know that I knew. And so I really did that pattern too. And I was like, wow, this is so fascinating. I want more of that. But again, you know, in life we ebb and flow and we go through, uh, you know, different periods where, you know, we're up, we're down, we're down. So I, but the whole 
pattern and that drew me into health coaching was noticing all of these patterns and what people did and what they ingested created the life that they live, mm. which I think is just interesting. So from mm, there, yes. you know, the, the work that I do is that whatever it is that you ingest, mm -hmm. meaning the food that you eat, the water you drink, the toxins that you breathe, the air, everything, everything that's coming in is going to contribute to how you live life and how happy you are. You know, you said even the water, I'm very much... Um, I only drink certain kinds of water, and I, just, I mean, I don't drink tap water. It has too much fluoride. It has too much stuff in it. In Los Angeles, of course, I use bottled water. I was at a business meeting this morning having breakfast, and um, my friend, I've known him for years. We also work together. Uh, we were creating some stuff. He's like, would you like some water? And I'm like, sure. It's over there. So he brought me some water, and he goes, I, I just said I'm not going to have any because I'm really careful about what I put into my body, including and especially my right. And I was like, whoa, so trippy. I mean, it, and it's very cool. But in a situation like that, I get to be carrying my glass water bottle. With yes, me. you should. Yeah. That, that is another really important thing. It's like you could be drinking filtered water, but if you're drinking it in plastic or if you're being bottled plastic water, you really want to make sure that that bottle is, that plastic's be free, because otherwise those chemicals are leaching into water. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's important. It's really important because that, you know, we drink a lot of water and if <laughs> toxic water all day. Exactly. Yeah. So it's amazing how much toxicity is out there that gets put into our body and until you know you don't know that you're carrying probably pounds upon pounds of toxins in your body of course you know this stimulated from my conversation this morning <laughs> well, well sure but it's true um uh, toxins are ubiquitous there's, we can't get away from them there there's no way you cannot you can't live a really clean life. Things are coming at you no matter what. So we are bombarded just by living in a world with so many cars and so many factories that all this stuff is just around us. We can't help that. We can control a lot about what comes in and we can we can limit it. And also we can do things to try and get rid of more toxins, but we really have to really take into account, you know, this is where what you eat really comes into play. Is like how many more toxins do you want to have enter your body when you're already getting them from mm -hmm. just living and breathing. Mm -hmm. So uh, you really want to start to pay attention to what you're putting in your food, which means sort of, you know, staying away from the processed junk foods, which is chemicals, artificial ingredients. I mean, all of those things your body has to process. And they are made so that you are addicted to them. They have these flavors in them, and you really are going to crave them. But it's just, it's really self-sabotaging you because you really are now going to create fat cells to store that because the body does not want to, that doesn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. it, it is what, what did you just put in me? Mm -hmm. um, oh, my God, we better protect you. The body that's just trying to protect itself is now going to store that in fat and not want to release it. So therein lies the, the problem with obesity, the rates that are going up and up and up as we get more and more toxic and people are eating more and more junk. It's incredible, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's really a, it's really a big fat problem. <laughs> big fat problem. You know, I, I love, I, I'm so in love with this topic. I don't think, you know, it was funny because the other day I thought, ah, I saw some like health coach advertising for a school program and I thought, Interesting. I thought, no, you got way too much on your plate. But I thought, not that I wanted to be a health coach, but that I, I love, I'm beginning to love it so much. And we go back to, again, what you don't know, you don't know until you know it. Right. And so until people examine what they're actually eating about processed foods, you and I have talked before about how the last 70 years, you know, or in 70 years ago, they started developing this processed type food right. that for some reason... I don't know why, whether it was a money thing or they thought they were being helpful or, or what happened, but our food change, you want to talk a little bit about that because that's really oh, sure. an eye-opener. Sure. You know, I remember being in the fourth grade and having to write a paper, and it was about the changes from, like, say, the era of my grandmother's life to my life, and I asked my mother <laughs> as a great schooler, you know, what are the big changes? What has changed so much? And one of the first things she said was convenience food because the TV dinners had come out. 
And that was like, just really, before that, really everything was handmade. And if you wanted a chicken, you went out to the chicken yard. I mean, it was really, you know, yeah. homegrown. That's pretty much how people lived. And now we are um, packaged, processed, packaged and processed the TV dinner and all this stuff need to have a shelf life. Because they they need to put all this stuff in because it, it's not fresh food. Uh, fresh food has doesn't last. So it's all made with artificial things so that it has, you know, the shelf life. Well, do you really want to eat something that's got all this stuff in it to make it last for the next 10 years? Right. It's so scary. <laughs> I mean, you know, well, it's in there to make it last for 10 years. I mean, it's not... you. So then you have to start thinking, well... If we can't even identify, well, what the heck is that? You know, well, the body certainly doesn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. But it's more than just what we eat that is a problem. Um, toxins are things that in our emotions and mind, too. So it's this the negativity in the world. It's the constant bombardment of people in anger or, you know, just bad news coming at us or, you know, the mind chatters, we're not enough, we, we need to be better, oh, you know, we can't do that. And yes, you can. So it's, it's, it's a detox, this mind of ours, and it's a detox of the body, but I notice the interconnectedness of if you eat a lot of stuff that's artificial, how well is your brain working? So it becomes, now what you're eating is affecting how you think. This is my own point of view, but I totally and strongly believe it through experimentation and observation mm -hmm. <laughs> and also through things that I've read and research. So it is true. Um, you can notice like from uh, things that you eat, say like drinking coffee. Coffee can change your attitude in a big fat way. Mm -hmm. Same way alcohol can change your attitude. Mm -hmm the positive or the negative or the happy or the sad or however it takes you, right? So if you think about things that are messed with, you know, or that coffee has got all the stimulants and it's got a lot of chemicals in coffee that are messing with us that give the jitters and all this stuff. Pure coffee probably wouldn't give us so much of the jitters. It's the chemicals that the companies are putting in there mm -hmm. when they process it. So you, when you start thinking about all of this, it's like, oh, my God, we can't think straight. Then we've got negative TV coming at us, and then we've got, you know, the haves and the have-nots, and so now we're all bummed because we think we should all have, you know, the Kardashians' money, or we can't be happy unless we do, which is insane, or that I could never be a success because we have self-doubt in ourselves. So really it becomes this clearing of watch what you put in and watch what you take in to, in order to, to be balanced and happy. And again, um, back to what you said in the very beginning of this piece is the bio-individuality um, comes into play of like the same diet is not right for everyone. The same foods that give me joy and happiness might make you feel terrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it all comes down to an elimination diet experimentation of really knowing what foods fuel you best for good thoughts for happiness, for really, you know, your intuition, your all, everything. It's really everything. You know what I've noticed, and, and I just came back, as you know, from um, a well-deserved week away, and so I didn't have my green smoothie shakes that you and I talked about originally, which we'll talk about again, but what I noticed was I'd wake up and I'd have one, and so it was a, um, for me, it was a, a bit of a cheat because it's a uh, vegetable um, not protein, but vegetable cleansing powder. Right. And so I use that, but then I also first throw in the um, frozen food that you, or frozen fruit that you suggested, and then some warm water, because otherwise it doesn't blend, it turns into ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, my body was craving it all the time. It was amazing to have, you know, because we all know what like a craving is like, either alcohol or... Right. Um, you know, whatever, whatever or the, it is. Or the sugar or whatever. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. My body was craving and still does. I still get the, you know, now that I'm back on it, I still get the, whoo, you know, that I want one. So I have those a couple times a day now. And it's really, really cool because I know that that's something. And this goes back to the bioindividuality because that's I know that this works well for my system and I feel amazing when I do it. So... Right, and so that, that, that is, there, there are two problems out there. There's um, the toxicity 
and then there's the deficiencies. Mm -hmm. So what you're talking about when you have the smoothie that makes you feel so good with the greens and everything that's in there, it's the nutrient density that is happening and, and your body's absorbing it and your brain is happy and your body's dancing because it's got energy because it's well fed. Now, if you have the TV dinner and the Doritos, <laughs> Would you feel that? Yeah. <laughs> you would actually not. You would actually with the Doritos. You would say, "Okay, now what?" Because it's not filling you up. Because there is no nutrients in those Doritos. Mm -hmm. So when you start to think about this, think about the crackers and the, you know, all the box stuff and all the things that really aren't real food. Mm -hmm. I mean, food is something that grows on a tree or is you know comes up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> so you have to start thinking about what's real. I mean, you know, it has, okay, it has some corn or something in it, but it's all processed to pieces and, you know, nutrients taken out and then we fortify it and put it back in. What is that all about, right? Let's get it all out and then let's fortify it. <laughs> it's, so it fright it's so frightening. We were at the store not too long ago and my husband grabbed an Easter bunny, chopped Easter bunny, mm -hmm. and the package said, I looked at it and it said, milk chocolate flavored. And I said to him, who's, you know, he thinks he's so into food and nutrition and um it's so funny and so um which is his journey too you know we all have yeah. so i said to him do you know what it means and he said milk chocolate and i said no it's fake they're flavoring it to taste like milk chocolate. and he said oh my god get rid of that and i said yeah that's a gmo and you know which he knows about and talks about and stuff so um i said to the the girl at the register i said will you please take this off this is not real that she goes oh no it says milk chocolate flavored i said i know that's part of the industry's you know gimmick and gadget to get yeah. you to buy something that's junky so no that that's a whole nother <laughs> webinar and and a whole <laughs> thing in itself about don't buy things with these ingredients but right. seriously you know whenever you see natural flavors what what is what's a natural flavor um <laughs> all of these things are not not good. I mean, it should say that it has cacao in it, you know, mm -hmm. for chocolate. It shouldn't say uh, something else. So, uh, you know, and also limit things that only, nothing should have more than five ingredients mm -hmm. and, you know, and something that's processed or made. So, yeah. anyway, that's a whole different thing. But the nutrient density thing, this is what stops cravings. This is what fuels the body. This is how your body starts dropping weight because guess what? Now you've fed the body. It's going, oh my goodness gracious, thank you so much. Now I know how to operate because I'm otherwise you've dumped all this other stuff and you haven't fed me yet. So that's why you constantly, people have this constant hunger, more cravings, more cravings. But if you have this nutrient density, now the body's like, oh my gosh, okay, we have what we need. Uh, we can we can create this energy. My cells are fed, you know. I mean, once all of that is going on, then it's like you're able to think better. You can focus. That you have you have more confidence, clarity, everything. Everything starts working. Now it's like, what do I want to do with my life? It's not that I can't. I can't. Now you're like, oh my god, I think I can. Mm -hmm, <laughs> I mm -hmm. think I. I think I will. Yeah. And so it it changes everything. And then once you get more and more into this, and you're eating more and more nutrient dense foods, what ends up happening is that every your cells start dropping these negative things that has been storing forever that you know stuff that emotion down let's stuff that down and then these things start coming up and then you can start detoxing these bad emotions when you start you can process them clearly and say oh my god that happened to me when i was four mm -hmm. <laughs> it scared me and i can let that go now and then it's like it just up levels your life to be able to go where you want to go instead of feeling fear and you don't even know why mm -hmm. right you know it's it's Food is, is such an amazing thing because it, it also helps us sleep better. Right. Not just not just the functioning of our brain, but the, the whole functioning system of our body. Right. And so okay. it's like, you know, you'd want to put the best stuff into your car. We're a machine too. So. Yeah, exactly. And what you put in is exactly what you're going to get out. And you can, you know, the body's resilient and it loves us. It lo our bodies love us because no matter what we put in there, it's still trying to survive. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's exactly. going, really? Again? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's really trying and it always will until it gets to the exhaustion point and then you come down with inflammation disease uh, and then you wonder how in the world did this happen? 
I love that we're still like in research about how you get sick. I mean, seriously, this is this is depleting the body. This is it, it has to rob from somewhere else. It has to steal from your bones if you're not putting the nutrients in. I mean, so all of these conditions that are unnecessary, that could be taken care of just through putting the, the nutrition into the body instead of having it struggle. And it's like that car, the car that's got, you know, what do they used to put water or sugar in the yeah. And then it's like <laughs> this yeah. way to... I think if you were going to be a big athlete, do you think you're going to do it? I mean, you know, you're going to really try and do everything right. Or I mean, so it's like I have the life that we want to have. we want to excel. We have to start thinking about taking better care of ourselves. Right. Let's talk about <clears throat> detoxing. There's different methods, different ways, different reasons. Right. Well, um, detoxing the body, I think, is super important. Um, just for the, everything that we've already said, as far as you know, we're taking all of these things in, some of which we cannot, you can't deflect. So you have to accept the fact that these are coming in. So really, I, I'm not all about this. Um, let, let's buy all these powders and let's you know just drink this and let's do all these crazy things. It can be very simple, just by eating pure, clean natural foods. So it's really about, you know, vegetables and fruits, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, looking at produce, organic produce, just keep these things coming in. It starts to clean. You have to imagine you are not eating well. You have a lot of sludge, I like to call it sludge, that's hanging out on your um, intestinal tract. Your intestinal tract is, is your immune system. It's how nutrients get into your body. It's got, to, it's got to pound through that intestinal wall, get into the bloodstream, and go where it needs to go. If, you have all, if, you're, not, if you're not pooping, <laughs> and if you are not eating right, and you're not having fiber, and you're not getting that stuff out, then it doesn't have its weight. Well, some of it's going in, but not optimally. Mm-hmm. So you really want to have all of this, this stuff working for you. So really, it's through really clean foods. It's through really saying, you know what, no soft drinks. Mm-hmm. No soft drinks, no, no alcohol, no coffee. Do it for a week at least, at least, just to clean out. And then, you know, and then try and limit. But like what we were just talking about, that morning smoothie can really get, it, it can get everybody on the path. I think I mentioned to the, this to you before my little brother who wanted some help from me and all I had him do was add a smoothie in the morning and he still ate junk food at lunch and he still ate junk fast food at dinner. He's a young guy and he uh, that's his life. He's busy, you know, whatever, busy. <laughs> and he lost 20 something pounds just by adding the smoothie. Mm-hmm. And he said he when he had that in the morning, he knew he could go until like one in the afternoon and not be hungry at all. Hmm. So there was no extra snacking. There was no let's pick up something else. So again, it's it's more about adding in. You know, when you start putting restrictions on people, then it's like uh, it becomes too difficult. Yes. So detoxing through through that, a lot of really clean water and really just paying attention to what you eat and and incorporating self love, self care into your program of, you know, certain little things like like tongue scraping, for instance, which gets all of this bacteria off of your tongue that, you know, just, it's just you know, clean what we can clean. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, dry skin brushing mm-hmm. actually helps your circulation increase and, and actually sweating through exercise. Let the toxins out. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really pretty simple stuff. And if you, if you can't, if you can't exercise to the sweating point, at least jump in a sauna or do something like that to just sweat. Mm, okay. Now share with us your free gift because that's the kind of also detox that I want to hear a little bit more about from you because you are you love it and you're good at it. You know, I actually I have these seasonal detoxes because um, I think it's important to at least get back on track at least once a quarter. Mm-hmm. And also, um, these um, detoxes go by what's in season this season, what produce, right? So you're, it's also, you know, having different nutrients coming into your body, so that's important too. Um, the one I have going now for spring um, is eating for beauty and energy from the inside out, and this is the one I'm offering to your viewers. Um, and that comes with a full detox guide. It's going to talk 
all about how to detox, you know, what are we doing and why, mm -hmm. and, you know, which organ are we focusing on, you know, for now it's uh, the liver. Um, and then it comes with all your recipes, smoothie recipes, um, juicing recipes, uh, all your meals, all very simple. Oh, now this is a big old let's tear up kitchen thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it comes with, I have to look at my little cheat sheet, um, a shopping list so that you have the ingredients you need for your um, shopping so that for what you're going to make so you don't have to go through all these recipes and figure that out. It's got all this self-care information and it also comes with a Facebook group so that you can get online into this closed Facebook group and ask me questions of, you know, I don't know if this is working for me or how should I handle this and I'm happy to answer and I give more information there, different That's handouts. Awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. information. And the uh, support is really important. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's also, is it also set up so that people in the group can also communicate with each other? Absolutely. Like we ask a question and then, boom, the answer will appear. Uh, right. You know. um, and everybody who's, it's a closed Facebook group, so it's not, it's not your kid brother and everybody else seeing what right. you're writing. I mean, it's for people who are in the detox. And so when you ask a question, everybody learns from, from everybody else. Or, and then, oh, I was going to ask that, or I hadn't thought of that, yeah. or, oh, what's the healthy oil, and oh my gosh, mm -hmm. can I have this? Or, yeah, it's really... I love those groups, because it's really so informational about what you're interested in, and right. as I tell people, we learn experientially, so by hearing somebody else's story or question, right. we're just, like you said, it's like, wow, okay, I was thinking about that, but way back here... It probably wouldn't have come up till I absolutely needed it, and then I wouldn't have the answer. So right. I think it's very cool. It's awesome. And, what, and what's cool, too, is that everybody feels like they're alone, that no one else is experiencing all of these things. Right. And, and it's so, oh, you're so alone. <laughs> everybody, you know, when you look at the stats, it's really sad. I mean, the people who have digestive issues, constipation, and all kinds of leaky gut and all kinds of issues, it, it, the numbers are astounding. So um, don't feel alone yeah. in this area, but it's something that you really do want to clean up because you don't want to get sick from this. It's awesome. And, and when we do take care of our health, our nutritional health, as you've told me before, it's our medicine. So yeah, yeah it's, that's, it's that's awesome. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, let mm -hmm. food be our medicine and um, medicine be thy food. Mm -hmm. You know, they had it right thousands of years ago. I don't know what happened to us in the meantime. <laughs> but, you know, really, it's really just been a problem when you when you look at this, you know, it's, it's really starting to become a huge problem. I mean, the, the staggering amounts of diabetes through sugar and absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's really problematic. And again, you know, the box things, hidden sugars everywhere, nutrient and out, fortified, you throw some sugar in there to make it taste good and make make you keep coming back. You really got to pay attention, and yeah. you really have to know that what we're supposed to eat is real food. <laughs> well, that's awesome, and that's almost um, we are out of time. But what else would you like to say before we say goodbye to the audience? Because what you were just saying about it being real food is is really important. Well, it seems so silly because it, it uh, that to seems even, so simple to to use the word real in front of food because mm -hmm. I mean that's just so, it's like absurd that are you going to eat artificial uh, grapes from you know the little plastic things that our grandmothers used to have you yes, know the, yes, the fake yes, fruit something yes. I mean so we have to we have to differentiate you know that we're eating real food it's crazy so really. Um, Everybody, just keep it simple. It's like I'm all about just keeping it simple. You know, go to the store and, and stick around in the produce section <laughs> and buy your colors, all the colors, rainbow. It's really beautiful. Make eating something special. Make, make it so that you know, you know that you're taking care of yourself. And give your body a break because your body really, really loves you. And it's trying hard every second, even when you're sabotaging it. So think about your poor little body. And believe me, the rewards are just so much worth the effort. And, once, and the good news is that once you switch over the taste buds and you stay away from processed foods, mm -hmm. it, it'll never taste the same. You won't want it. it, it, it you will crave nutrients. And, and, and your, your problem is solved. And you're awesome. inter your energy and clarity, and, and now you're happy. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about spreading happy, so 
if you're healthy, you're happy. If you are eating real food, you're happy. I mean, I know there are people with conditions out there, but you know, it, it just really does help you be more happy if you feel good. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Amy, for joining us. Thank you, Mia. You're yes. just great. Love you, beautiful girl. Thank you. Adore you too. Okay, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And I think Amy's is the very last show of, of our episode of our series. So I so appreciate you joining us again and again and again and again. And any questions that you have, please write everybody. Write me. We're here to help you. Thank you again. Bye. Bye, everybody.